This is a TRX Katsu Atomic Push-Up. Now for this exercise, you wanna be face down, but we begin on our back. Take your feet, go up through the stirrups, point your toes up to your knees, and roll over to your forearms and your knees. So roll on over, wiggle out the straps so they're nice and even. You want the stirrup handle right about that midfoot. Nice and comfortable, keep your toes up. From there, you're going to straighten your arms out and go into a push-up position. So go up on your hands, now lift your knees up in the air, lower your body down to a push-up position, and on the way up, suck your stomach in, and bring your knees all the way in as far as you can. Straighten your legs back out, and lower down to a push-up position. Come on back up, pull them in. One nice fluid motion, legs out when you go down, legs in on the way up. From there, go right down to your knees, back to your forearms, and you can pull your feet out of the stirrups and go back to a seated position. This is the TRX Katsu Body Saw. For this position, you wanna be face down, but you begin on your back. From there, you put your feet up through the stirrups to about midfoot, pull your toes up towards your knee, and then roll over to your forearms and knees. Wiggle your feet so the straps are nice and even. To make it hard, you go away from the anchor point. To make it easier, you go back towards. So first, we'll start harder. You squeeze your glutes, hollow your stomach, and straighten your knees to raise your body in the air. Hold that position and saw forward and back on those forearms. Make sure you keep your stomach tight and your glutes tight. If that's difficult, simply work your way back to underneath the anchor point and it'll make it a little bit easier for you. When you're done, bend your knees, take them to the floor, pull your feet out of the stirrups, and work your way back to the seated position. For the three-way calf stretch, you wanna keep your foot planted on the ground and you're gonna drive your knee forward over the middle of your foot, then over your big toe, and then out to your pinky toe while you maintain full foot contact throughout the entire stretch. For the three-way toe tap, you wanna begin by pressing your big toe into the floor to grab the floor with your foot. Relax your knee, keep your stomach tight, hang on to something, and you're going to take the other foot, tap it in front, barely bending your knee, keeping your heel on the ground, come back up, tap to the side, tap behind, and then switch feet. Push your big toe into the ground, tap in front, tap to the side, and tap behind while you keep your heel on the floor and your stomach tight and your pelvis level. For the half kneeling three-point hip flexor stretch, you're gonna begin by going down to one knee. You wanna take your other leg and put it out in front of you, take a pole, a broomstick, or even a chair, and you wanna hang on to the top of that pole with both thumbs going up. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna put that pole out in front of you, and you're gonna sink forward, and as you do, let your arms come out in front, and just hang on to that pole and let your rest of your body just kind of sink forward. That's the first point. The second point is, is you're gonna take that pole onto the outside of that front leg with that same side, thumbs up, and as you go forward, you're gonna pull the pole out to the side and you're gonna push down on that pole to add a little bit of that hip flexor stretch. The third point is bringing it on the inside of that foot behind your heel, put it there to block that thigh, hang onto that pole, and then turn and reach back while you hold that thigh open. Then switch legs and do the same thing on the other side. Meet Amanda. She's not happy with her level of fitness, so she signs up for a 10K run. Amanda's really committed to this. She starts by running every day. By week seven, Amanda's lost five pounds and is feeling great. She decides to double her training efforts, but after three hard workouts in a row, she injures her hamstring. Dejected, Amanda gives up on her goal. On race day, Amanda sits at home, now five pounds heavier. Now meet David, head of marketing for Atalanta Shoes. He's launched a new line of shoes targeted at older millennial women. He knows there's a big market for his shoe, but he hasn't had much luck finding it. Sales have been dismal and he's worried the CEO will cut the line. What's going on here? Amanda was motivated and committed to success, but ultimately failed. David understands his target market, but can't engage with it. There has to be a better way. 
Introducing ARTA, the smart training community. It starts with the athlete. Just enter some background information and ARTA uses artificial intelligence to build a training plan unique to your specific situation. Next, as you train, the ARTA real-time coach gives advice on how to optimize your workout. This coaching is based on decades of experience working with tens of thousands of athletes at the world-renowned Performance Lab and has already been deployed for leading fitness brands. If you miss a workout, ARTA uses AI to adapt your overall plan. All this coaching is based on data you generate while training, which Arda's AI makes much more valuable. But who owns your data? Protecting privacy of their fitness data is the top concern for users of fitness trackers. That's why Arda uses blockchain so that nobody sees your data without your permission. But why would you ever give permission for someone to see your fitness data? That brings us to the Art of Fitness community. The core of this community is the athlete. It turns out that the insights that Arta generates from athletes' data are valuable to a wide range of organizations. If you choose to give permission, you'll receive valuable Arta tokens. Use these tokens for things like future training plans or fitness merchandise. Even better, since these tokens are limited in supply, the more people use them, the more demand there'll be for them. So athletes get highly personalized coaching to help reach their goals. Fitness organizations get valuable, accurate, targeted insights to help with research and marketing. Athletes in turn profit from the valuable data they've generated. And at all times, athletes stay in control of who does and does not see their private information. Let's get back to Amanda and David and try again. This time with Arda. David signs up with the Arda community and is able to mine data from millions of runners, many of whom are older millennial women. David targets these millennial 10K women with a promo offering at Atlanta's premier shoe with six months of free Arda training. Sales are off the chart and the CEO is thrilled. Amanda is one of those targeted and she orders the shoes. She follows Arda's AI-based training program and stays injury-free because Arda is keeping her training plan sensible. On race day, Amanda places third and is thrilled with her results. Amanda and David are both grateful for Arda. The Arda Smart Training Community, building a healthier world, one athlete at a time.